Hi friends, welcome back to my channel and welcome if you're new here. My name is Jen, I'm a certified weight loss and nutrition coach and I'm on the WW Personal Points Program. Almost one full week on the Personal Points Program. So if you are excited for this Q&A video and I have some very, very exciting news to share with you, give this video a big huge thumbs up and if you're new or you haven't yet subscribed, I would love to have you here. Hit the subscribe button and don't forget to click the bell next to it so you never miss a single video. Check out the description box down below for nutrition coaching. I do offer personalized macros and calories, highly, highly recommend, and I have one-on-one -on -one coaching if you just feel like you want to talk with me directly. I've also released my four recipe eBooks. They are all available. They contain 15 recipes and also include calories. It's great just to have easy, healthy recipes at your fingertips. Links, discounts to all of my favorite things, and of course, my Facebook group. Come on over, join us there. I would absolutely love to have you. In fact, a lot of the questions for today's video came directly from my Facebook group. So come on over, join us there. We would love to have you. So let's jump in to this personal points, new plan, Q&A, as well as some super exciting news. mentioned, I did ask on my Facebook group for any questions that you guys have regarding the new personal points plan. And I also put a post out on my community tab here on YouTube and I got a lot. And I mean a lot of questions. I think that there is quite a bit of confusion around the plan still, which is to be expected. We haven't even been on the new plan for an entire week yet. So it's common that there's a little bit of confusion. There's obviously some reluctance. There's people saying they don't like the plan. Let's back up a little bit on saying we don't like the plan. How do you not like something you've not really tried? It's kind of like a kid with vegetables. I don't like broccoli. I don't like Brussels sprouts. And then they try broccoli and Brussels sprouts and realize it's not so bad. That could be the exact same situation with the new WW plan. So give it a solid try. Try it for at least two weeks before making a decision that you don't like it. And remember, this plan is based on science, probably years of science and tweaking that WW has done to make us successful on the plan. And even bigger than that, remember that WW is a business. They want us to be successful. If we're not being successful on their program, if we're not losing weight, we're not going to stay on the program, which means that they are going to lose money. So there is some rhyme and reason behind the personal points program. So with that being said, let's start diving into the questions because we have a lot of them. So I'm going to start with the few questions that I received on my community tab on YouTube. Question number one is how many points can be rolled over daily? And if you get points for vegetables, water, and movement, can those roll, roll over also? And where do they go first, your daily or your weekly? So I did mention in my video that I did about the new plan that you can roll over four points every single day and those are deposited into your weeklies. Now your one point that you earn for drinking 60 ounces or more of water, that goes into your daily points. The points that you earn for eating one cup of vegetables, and remember this is unlimited, so for every cup of non-starchy vegetables that you eat, one point will be de deposited into your dailies. And as far as activity goes, those points are deposited into your weeklies. So that gives you the option whether or not to use your activity points, which I think is great. I would recommend that you use your weekly points, but the activity points that you earn are deposited into your weeklies. Question number two is any suggestions on keeping track of the points earned with water and vegetables? I added them, but then couldn't remember which ones I added as the day progressed. So there are two ways to add in the vegetables that you're consuming during the day. My recommendation to you would be just to add them to your meal. So let's say that you have a cup of broccoli with breakfast, track a cup of broccoli. Even though it's zero points, track it into your breakfast so that that point is added into your daily points for the day. The other option that you can do to track vegetables is on the home screen of your app. You can hit the little plus sign and track the vegetables that you ate there and it will deposit it into your dailies. Here's the thing to remember with tracking vegetables. Do not track them in both places, meaning do not add them to the meal, so breakfast, and then don't go back and 
add them on the home screen of the app because then you're double dipping and you're going to get two points back instead of the one point that you earned. So hopefully that makes sense. So however you want to track your vegetables, only track it in one place. I was confused on how to add my activity if I don't have a fitness tracker. I finally got it after so many tries, but can you give us some simple instructions so that we can save the information? So any activity tracker that you have, whether it be an Apple Watch, a Fitbit, any type of tracker, you can sync that to the WW app. Now, if you don't have an activity tracker or maybe the one that you do have doesn't sync up with the app, you can manually go in and add your activity. So let's say you took a half an hour walk, you can manually go in and add that half of an hour walk. It will calculate the activity points that you earned based on your personal information, and then once again, deposit those points into your weeklies. I'm confused. I feel like I have to rethink all of my favorite foods. Most of the foods I eat went up in points. I was on the green plan, so I went from 30 dailies to 20, and my weeklies went from 28 to 21, and the only thing I like on the zero points list is avocado. So first, let me explain a little bit further why the points on some of the foods that you ate before switching to personal points have went up. So as I mentioned in my video, the calculation of points is different. Now it is based on fiber, protein, saturated fat, and added sugar. So let's take a slice of regular full fat cheese as an example. So on the blue, green, and purple plan, a slice of cheese was about four points. Now, if you look it up in your app, it's five points. That is because cheese contains saturated fat, which upped the points of that food item. So depending on what makes up the food, that's how the points may have changed. And the reason for this is, and the main reason for this, is because WW wants to steer you away from as much processed foods as possible. And remember, WW is a somewhat to a very low calorie diet. So foods that are higher in saturated fat and higher in calories are going to have a higher points value. Now I, as you know, don't eat a lot of fat free, sugar free, really anything. Sometimes I'll cook with a low fat or light sour cream or not fat Greek yogurt. But if I'm going to have yogurt or cheese, it's going to be full fat. You just have to count for that into your points. Whether the points of those foods went up or not, you have to choose to allocate your daily points the way that fits what you want to eat. And as far as the zero point foods list, honestly, I have a hard time believing that out of the hundreds and hundreds of zero point foods on the list that the only thing that you'll eat is avocado. I think that you need to expand your food and maybe try and start to incorporate some other items so that you can enjoy and eat enough calories and save your points for other things by incorporating more zero point foods. I just downloaded the app and curious if there is a calorie tracking area if one wanted to know how many calories they consume daily. So this is a fantastic question and I have mentioned several times that I wish that WW would allow us to have a secondary metric of tracking calories, but that is not the case even with the personal points program. So there's two ways that you can track your calories. Number one is you can go into all of your meals that you've tracked in the WW app, and as you input the foods that you're eating, it will show the calories and the macros of those foods, and then you manually have to go in and add them up to get your total calories and macros for the day. Or you can take advantage of a calorie counting app, and this means that basically you have to double track. You have to track in the WW app for points, and then you have to track in a calorie counting app for calories and macros. And I know it's another step, but really because WW won't give us that information, that's really the only way to get it, unfortunately, other than manually adding it up. I will link Lose It down in the description box. That's my favorite app. That's the one that I track my calories and macros on. What if I'm lifetime and I'm content with my weight? If you are currently lifetime, like I mentioned in my video about the new plan, you just need to go into your settings and make sure that it is set at lifetime, not at weight loss mode. And the app will automatically recalculate your points and give you the option to choose your zero point 
point foods as well in order to maintain your current weight. So that's all the questions on my community tab on YouTube. So now I'm going to address the questions that were asked in my Facebook group. So I completed the questionnaire honestly to how I have been eating lately, which is not great. So I ended up with 24 points. No zero point food fruits. Zero point foods are chicken, turkey, eggs, potatoes, and yogurt, non-starchy veggies. Weeklies are 21. I know we're supposed to stay positive and try this, which I will, but I'm not sure how this is going to work out. So the situation with the questionnaire is this. You are initially going to answer the questionnaire honestly, based on the foods that you eat day to day. Now this doesn't mean that if you're having a bad week and you ate McDonald's all week that you answer the questionnaire according to that. How do you normally eat? What are the foods that you normally choose to eat? That's how you need to answer the questionnaire. Now in the event that you didn't answer it honestly or you misunderstood some of the questions, you can always go back and retake the questionnaire. But the key to this whole program and the way to personalize it to you is by answering the questions honestly. We're not here to try to manipulate the system. We shouldn't be trying to get as many points as possible every single day. That takes away from the aspect of losing weight. The system is set up for us to lose weight. So don't try to manipulate it. Don't try to go back and tweak it 70 times to get the most points out of it that you can. Answer the questionnaire honestly and then give it a shot for at least one to two weeks before going back and making any adjustments. I have a question. After my assessment, I have wheat pasta and brown rice as my two zero point starches. I wonder if I have my one cup limited dinner, would it really make a difference if one night instead of the pasta or rice, I subbed a potato? I was reading where people were saying that each week you can retake the test so you can change your choice for the week. So this goes back to what I was just talking about and that is not trying to manipulate the system. The questionnaire isn't designed for you to take every single week so that one week you can have potatoes for zero and the next week you can have a rice for zero and the next week pasta. That's not how the program is designed. If you took the questionnaire and you were given rice and pasta as zero points, if you eat a potato, you need to track it. You can't just decide to have additional zero point foods or to swap one zero point starch out for another zero point starch and call it zero points, even if that's not one of the foods that you were assigned. So again, be honest, follow the program for at least two weeks if you find that it's not working for you. And when I say not working, I mean something along these lines. Let's say that avocado is the food that the questionnaire assigned you as zero points based on the answers that you provided in the questionnaire. And let's say that over the course of one to two weeks, you just find that you're not eating avocado every day or most days of the week. This would warrant you retaking the quiz because maybe avocados should be points for you and maybe one of the other foods that you find yourself eating more frequently should be on your zero points foods list. But you cannot swap out zero point foods if that isn't zero points for you. It seems like the new plan helps to promote some unhealthy behaviors with food by saying you can earn food by drinking water. Water is a basic need and you shouldn't use it to earn food. I think WW has taken a step backwards when it comes to building a healthy relationship with food. What happened to building a healthy healthy mindset. The whole basis behind being able to earn back points essentially for eating food or drinking water is to form healthy habits. There are a lot of people that struggle with getting even 60 ounces of water in a day. So if this option to earn a point back drives them to drink water and to eat their vegetables, I feel like that is forming a healthier, well-rounded approach to eating. Now I will say that if you struggle with any type of eating disorder or eating disorder tendencies, this is something that you may struggle with is getting out of the mindset of earning food. With that being said, I think the majority of the people will find that it gravitates them towards eating more vegetables and drinking more water. And most of us have less points than we did before. So if you really think about it, by earning those points back for healthy behaviors like drinking water and eating our vegetables, it kind of puts us back to where we were prior to the switch over of personal points. Do we still get charms at our meetings? I know that WW 
AEW will do special things during the summer or for the holidays to earn charms, but I don't know if they're still doing that. So if you know, or you've asked that question at your workshop, leave it down in the comments so that the rest of us know whether or not we're still earning our bling bling. I would like to read some testimonials from people who have tested and navigated the personal points program well and lost weight, got healthier or maintained their weight. I would just like to glean from their experience. There have been people that have been testing out the personal points program for anywhere from weeks to months. A lot of these people include WW coaches and their assistants at the meeting, as well as a handful of us who tested out the new program. So if you want some experience gleaned from people who have been on the program, I would definitely have a conversation with your coach and the person who checks you in at your workshop. And my other recommendation would be to go onto public forums like Connect or maybe even in my Facebook group and ask for positive experiences from personal points. I'll tell you that the couple of Zoom meetings that I attended the day the new plan rolled out, both of the people leading the meeting said that they are at maintenance or relatively close to maintenance and that both of them had lost weight and been really successful in the few weeks to months that they tried out the program. I don't understand why healthy choices like fruit are being restricted by having points even when not on a diabetic plan. Sure, I don't prefer to eat fruit most days of the week, so should I choose to eat those because they're nutritious, low calorie, high fiber foods? Absolutely. Remember that everybody's zero point foods are different. So when you answer honestly the questionnaire, if you didn't say that you eat fruits, fruits most days, chances are they're not going to give you fruit for zero points. The whole premise behind personal points is to give you zero point foods of the foods that you love and the foods that you eat most often. If you have to track points for fruit, then track points for fruit. And yes, absolutely, you should still be eating the fruit and you shouldn't stop eating fruit because it has points attached to it. It just may not have been one of your zero point foods based on how you answered the questionnaire. How often can I change my zero point foods? Daily, depending on what I'm planning to eat that day. No, you should not be retaking the assessment daily. Like I said, you should wait one to two weeks, if not longer, before retaking the assessment. Because if you answered it honestly in the first place, then those are your zero point foods that you should be eating. Those are the points that you should be eating. Those are the weeklies that you should be eating. So I do not recommend, again, trying to manipulate the system and retake the assessment every day, but really give it a good shot one to two weeks before retaking it. For health, I was on the green plan and tracked everything. My concern is with the zero point foods. Should I have one or two servings of a zero point food at every meal to keep calories in check. So first of all, no food is free. Every food has calories attached to it. So I like to call them zero point foods, not free foods. It's just a way to remember that nothing is free that we consume other than water. WW recommends that you do not have to weigh, measure, or track your zero point foods. However, you should be mindful of the portion. So if a portion of chicken is three ounces, then you probably shouldn't eat six, eight, or 10 ounces per meal because now you're eating in an excess of calories and calling it zero points. So my recommendation would be to every time you eat a zero point food, try to stick relatively close to a traditional serving size of that zero point food. You can have as many zero point foods during the day as you need to feel satisfied. You should stop eating zero point foods when you're satisfied. Not eat tons and tons of zero point foods just because they're zero points because remember they still have calories and if you overdo it you can take yourself out of a calorie deficit and then you're not going to lose weight. Will rollover points show up in my next day's daily points? No, your rollovers will automatically be deposited into your weeklies, not into your daily points. Does anyone know why deli turkey comes up with points if turkey should be be free. We're going to call it zero points, not free. It depends on the zero point protein that you're choosing. So when it comes to deli meat, it has to be 99% fat free turkey in order for it to be zero points. Seeing this question a lot with ground turkey and ground chicken, it has to be 99% fat free for turkey and at least 96% fat free for ground chicken for it to count as zero points. Any other amount of fat in the meat, it's going to be points and that goes for deli meat as well. And if there is additives to the deli meat, like oil or sugar, going to make it have points as well. I'm seeing the same question over and over again about why your number of daily smart points has dropped 
maybe a little bit or significantly from the points that you received when you followed the blue, green, and purple plan. The reason for this is based on your zero point food. So if your zero point foods list contains foods that are high in fat, high in calories, it's going to decrease the number of daily points that you receive. And remember, no matter what plan you followed before, blue, green, or purple, zero point, you have less foods to track now because you have more zero point food options. People who were on the green plan, the only zero point food they had before was non-starchy vegetables. So of course they're going to have more points because they have to track points for everything. People on the blue plan generally had less points than green, but more points than purple because they had more zero point foods than the green plan, but less than purple. So their points are going to be given to them accordingly. And lastly, people on the purple plan had the lowest amount of points because they had the most zero point food options. So now we're seeing that people who were previously on the purple plan generally now have quite a bit more points than they did before because now oatmeal, brown rice, pasta, they're not all zero points. One of those is zero points, and now they have to track points for the other zero point foods that used to be zero on the purple plan. So we're seeing that people on the purple plan generally have way more points on the new plan. People on the blue plan either are pretty close to the points they had before, maybe a little less, maybe a little bit more, and people on the green plan are given substantially less points because they have so many more zero point foods. So if you think about it, it all balances out. It's very, very similar to the blue, green, and purple plan. Even though your points may look dramatically more or less, you're still getting the same amount of food essentially as you did before. Your points are just allocated a little bit differently. So don't panic about seeing less dailies and less weeklies. I promise, I promise it all balances out. Does anyone know if frozen French fries cooked in an air fryer, no oil are zero points? if you have potatoes as a zero point food. I'm also seeing people asking questions about Skinny Pop. Why is that not zero points? Here's the thing with zero point foods. With popcorn, it has to be air popped popcorn. Skinny Pop is made with oil. So that's why Skinny Pop and those pre-made popcorns aren't zero points. As for French fries, French fries are processed, which means there's a lot of added ingredients and generally also including sugar and oil in those frozen French fries. So they're not going to be zero points. The only foods that are zero points are whole real food. So real potatoes, real sweet potatoes, air popped popcorn, non-fat Greek yogurt, not full fat, fat-free cottage cheese, not 1%, 2%, or 4%. So make sure that you're really understanding what, what zero point foods are on your list and that French fries and Skinny Pop are not zero points. There are so many, and I mean so many more questions that I've seen floating around on my Facebook group and over on YouTube. And this video would potentially be hours and hours long if I answered all of them. But I really wanted to focus today on the questions that I see the most. And another question, that I see a lot that I've been asked myself in my Facebook group through DM, through Instant Messenger, is when are the points for the recipes that you create and the recipes you share on your meal prep and your what I eat in a day, when will those be updated with the new personal points plan? So originally in my two videos that I put out before the plan and when the plan launched, I said that basically Unfortunately, whatever points my recipe is are my points, and I don't have a way to figure out what my dinner recipe is for points for you, and that you were going to have to essentially put that information into the WW app yourself and figure out the points. But there is some light at the end of the tunnel. There is some good news. I was peeking around on the app. I was messing around with the recipe builder. And I'm really excited, and I mean excited to share with you guys that I have figured out how to create a recipe in the WW app that gives me my personal points. I'm able to share the link for the recipe that I created in my app with you. What's going to happen is when you click on the link, you're going to be asked to log into the WW app because this is all done through the app itself. Once you log into the app, it will automatically take you to the recipe and it will automatically recalculate my recipe, my points into your points. So what that means, 
What that means is that my recipes now can be completely recalculated automatically and tracked for you based on your zero point foods. So you don't have to put them in the recipe builder. You don't have to do anything other than click the link and track the recipe. So this is absolutely amazing. I know that there was a lot of buzz and hub around the WW community. What happens with bloggers who give us WW recipes? How are they possibly going to figure the points out for everybody? Well, this makes that happen by simply clicking the link. The WW app will recalculate any recipe into your points. So this is how I'm going to continue to share recipes moving forward. What you'll see is that when I share a recipe in my meal prep, in my what I eat in a days, on my meal plan that I offer every month in my Facebook group, there will be a link to the recipe. You will click on the link, you will log in, and it will recalculate my recipe into your points. So it's going to be very, very simple. I will be putting this link on my website. Normally where I would put the number of points on my website for the recipe. Instead, there will just be a link there so that it can recalculate into your point. So I couldn't be happier. I'm happy for the bloggers out there who put so much work into making these WW recipes and figuring out the points. And a lot of these people have their blogs as their source of income. And I'm so happy that that's not being taken away, that there's a workaround, there's a loophole that we're able to still share recipes and it will calculate automatically no work on your end into the correct points for you. But this is probably the best news of my life on the new WW personal points plan is that I'm still able to share my recipes with you and make them completely personal to you. So if you are excited for that and that alone, definitely give this video a big, huge thumbs up and let me know down in the comments if you have any additional questions that maybe I can answer or the community can answer for you. Check out that description box. I'll link the Lose It app and I will also link my recipe website if you're not familiar with that, as well as all of my other favorite things. I'll put my Facebook group down there so that you can come join us over there for support. I would also recommend following me on Instagram because I'm on there pretty regularly and that's really between that and my Facebook group the best way to keep up with me a day today. I'll also make sure that nutrition coaching and my four recipe eBooks are down in that description box for you as well. So don't forget to thumbs up this video. And if you're new and not yet subscribed, I would love to have you hit the subscribe button and click the bell next to it. So you never miss a single video. I hope this was helpful. I hope this answered some of the questions that you have and let's give the new personal points plan a good shot. Stick with your assessment, stick with your questionnaire, stick with your zero point foods for one to two weeks. And I have a pretty good feeling you're going to see success. Thank you again so much for watching. Happy Sunday, and I'll see you next time. Bye.